If you are planning for an admission to PhD and you are worried about how you will get your stipend, how you will get your salary, what fellowship you will get, then today's video is for you. Hi, hello, my name is Atya. Welcome to PhD Printer. I make videos about PhD, latest opportunities in entrance exams as well as research. I also make content around wellness, vipassana and mindset. You are thinking of taking admission to PhD, but how are you going to fulfill it? What are the fellowships that you will get? How you will get fellowship when you have not cleared any entrance exam if you need answer to any of this then watch this video till the end because i'm going to speak about not just the different modes of getting fellowships i will also tell you how much exact salary do phd scholars get what are the different types of phds yes there are different types of phds and i'm not speaking about subject over here in the end i'm going to give you a list of few fellowships which you can use to get salary for your PhD. So what are we waiting for? Without further ado, let's begin. The thing with PhD is there are so many scholarships and fellowships available that students are not even aware of it. I get messages almost every single day, if not actually every single day, about asking me questions about fellowship, whether they will get fellowship or no. There is so much confusion in students regarding PhD admissions that I thought I need to do a video. Before going for filming this video, I have also made a video on PhD admissions 2024, which will tell you the exact process from start to finish. So that would be like a step-by-step -step guide. In today's video, I am going to address this major concern about how to get a scholarship for your PhD. The thing is whether you get scholarship or no, that is not the question. It's which fellowship because there are several fellowships. When I was researching for this video, I came to know that even Google has a fellowship for research for PhD and that is something that I didn't know earlier. When I started researching and reading about this for this video, that time I came to know. If a company like Google is giving scholarship for PhD, then PhD, which also implies that PhD is significantly important degree. It's not a degree, but what I'm saying is it's a significantly important course. There are fellowships available right, left and center. Today, I'll just get your attention to all of this. If basically and broadly I divide everything, there are three ways by which you get a fellowship. As far as the Indian PhD system works, I will come to the abroad one in a while. As far as Indian PhD system works, the three ways are entrance exam, institute exam and merit. Entrance exam meaning you clear national entrances like NET, whether it is UGC, CSIR, DBT, you clear BINC, you clear gate and these are some of the entrances through which the central agencies give you funding for your work. Then as far as abroad scholarships are concerned, then specific agencies roll out the notification. For example, I recently did a video on Erasmus Plus fellowships that is for masters. Then you have Commonwealth scholarship that were for PhD masters exchange programs. Then we had dad fellowships. All these fellowships are ruled out. The only way to know about this is to google search what i do is i follow google discover so whenever you click on any scholarship related post it will show you more of that all the latest things which are going on with respect to entrance exams or with respect to research everything shows up over there so that is also one way of staying updated if you are interested in a particular university in abroad for phd admission then of course you can keep a tab on that university website and you are going to get all the notification the second mode of getting a fellowship for PhD is through institute fellowship or through institute entrance. That means even if you don't clear any kind of national entrances, most of the universities and institutes have their own entrances which are different from what is happening at UGC net level or at other national entrance exams. So you can answer that and get through the PhD interview. Third way of getting through PhD admissions is through merit. That means whatever qualification that you have got till post-graduation it is PhD, though bachelors also are eligible for PhD. Whatever qualification you have got, how much percentage you have got throughout, what was your participation, also what was your whole academic profile, how was it? Based on that, the next thing that you might want to check is whether it is part-time or full-time because your fellowship amount depends on that. Part-time programs do not get any fellowship. Full-time programs are the ones which get the fellowship. I have done a detailed video on this in the past, so you can refer to that if you 
are in a fix whether to go for a part time or full time PhD. Whenever we speak about PhD, we just think in terms of part time or full time and the subjects, right? But PhD programs also are of several types. The usual PhDs that we see or PhD admission that we see that is focused around research, theory, and analysis. You form your objectives, you frame your objectives. Based on that, you are designing the experiments, you conduct the experiments, do the publications, and submit your thesis. Then there is something called as professional doctorate. That means if you are working in an industry or if you are working in some practical application which is required for an industry, your entire experimental design will be different for that. In that case, your objective is not just to do a PhD or a regular PhD but also to get industrial training as well. In such cases, you get something called as Prime Minister's Fellowship for Doctoral Research where you need an industry partner for your PhD. It's a good example of a professional doctorate. There's also a trend of online PhDs these days. To be honest, personally, I'm in two ways about these online PhDs, but nevertheless, they also exist. Online PhD means you complete your coursework, experiments, everything online. Online PhDs won't be possible if you are doing a wet lab work where you require lab experiments. All your events happen online and through video conferencing. Hybrid PhD is something where you do the coursework online and certain portions you prepare in campus. Certain things you do in campus. You may have to visit the campus for your dissertation work or something of that sort. You can say it as similar to part-time PhD. A campus PhD is something where you totally rely on the resources in the campus. You have to be physically present in the campus because otherwise you will not get results. The PhD that I'm doing requires results from campus. I have to be in my lab to get results. It is not possible otherwise. Most of the PhDs are campus PhDs. The duration of a PhD is four to five years. To go without funding over all these years is not a good idea. I met somebody at a conference recently and when I asked her about her funding, she said she is not getting funding from anywhere. She was self-financing her PhD. That is the dedication that she had. But otherwise, I would never suggest self-financing for a PhD even if you have money because tuition fees or a semester fees these are not the only fees that you can pay. Whenever you start with a PhD program there could be several other accessory expenditure that comes all of a sudden. You may not be prepared for that. It's always better to opt for a fully funded PhD whether you are applying in India or abroad. Now say suppose you are applying for a PhD abroad then make sure that there are words such as fully funded. Also make sure that tuition fees are taken into consideration when you are making the decision. Wherever the tuition fee is getting covered, you go for that. Personal statements and passports and country eligibility reports, these will be required for your admission. On this channel, I've made several videos from fellowships right from Stanford to Commonwealth to Eiffel Excellence Fellowship. So if that is a concern, stay tuned on this channel so you get updated about everything. How much amount should you get in a PhD to call it a good fellowship. See, the current norms in India is 37,000 for first two years and 42,000 for next three years as of now. Where does the difference lies? The difference lies in HRA and contingency. HRA is house rental allowance which you get. So government gives a certain percentage of your fellowship extra in addition to your main stipend so that you live comfortably and you get good salary. Contingency means some amount that is given to research scholars usually it is given yearly some fellowships give it semi-yearly that means twice a year also but mostly it is yearly and it will be an amount like to attend conferences to attend things and buy stuff which you otherwise cannot buy from your stipend so these are additional 37 and 42 this remains as the norm the difference in fellowships comes as far as HRA and as far as contingency goes. In Prime Minister's Research Fellowship, the stipend is 70,000 per month. The HRA is extra and your contingency also you get. In such cases, what happens is stipend and everything is completely different. But otherwise, most of the fellowships, the norm is 37 and 42. Secondly, as far as your abroad scholarships are concerned, then different universities, different scholarships have different norms. Usually, I have seen they give around 
around $1,500 to $2,000 per month as the stipend and then you have visa costs, reimbursement, airfare, travel contingency, travel grants. Usually in India, the amount that is given as contingency, it's called as contingency only. In abroad, it's called as a grant. The terms may be different, entirely the principle remains the same. I have done a detailed video on step-by-step -step guide for getting a fellowship where I outline my five-step process from not knowing anything about scholarship to getting a fully funded scholarship. You can choose whatever you pick. I have also outlined resources over there so you can have a look. In the upcoming section, I'm going to tell you about few fellowships. PhD scholarships are not limited to just these, but I have to tell you about these because these are some of the most famous ones and the most known ones also. So let's move on to the screen. Sark Agricultural PhD Fellowships. If you are into agriculture or if you are interested in agricultural related disciplines, Prime Minister Research Fellowship is one such where the initial payment itself is 70,000 per month. Swami Vivekananda Single Child Scholarship for Research in Social Science. If you are interested in this particular subject, then you have Vision India Foundation Fellowship. Then you have ESSO NCESS Junior Research Fellowship. Then you have Jawaharlal Nehru Memorial Fund Scholarships. All these fellowships and scholarships are there for you to apply for this. Then you also have Fulbright Nehru Doctoral Research Fellowships. You also have ICHR Junior Research Fellowships if you are interested in subjects related to historical research. Maulana Azad National Fellowships is one such widely popular PhD fellowship for minorities in the country. NCERT Doctoral Fellowship for PhD is also available which happens based on your net scores. CSIR UGC JRF Net Fellowship. If you are on this channel for even some time then you are already aware of CSIR and UGC Net Fellowships which gives you funding on par with everything else that is happening at the central government. Clearing Gate also offers financial assistance. However, I would like to say that when it comes to Gate, institutes are sometimes partial where they clearly mention in some of the brochures that Gate financial assistance would be provided and Gate financial assistance would be not provided. It's not that Clearing Gate always gets you a fellowship. Though by rule, you are supposed to get financial assistance, but it also depends from scholarship to scholarship and institute to institute. You also have Ayush Research Fellowships for fellowships in medicine for doing PhD in medicines. You also have MHRD PhD Fellowships for Asian students. You also have ICSSR Doctoral Research Fellowships. These are some of the PhD fellowships that I wanted to highlight to you because many of you are not aware of discipline specific scholarships also for PhD. I'm thinking of doing a video specifically for minority students and students belonging to SCST OBC communities. There are scholarships and fellowships specifically for you. If you are interested in something like this, then let me know. I will do a full-on compilation of all the scholarships possible for minorities as well as SCST OBC category as far as PhD admissions are concerned. I hope you have found value through today's video. It was long overdue and I really wanted to do something like this where I get you everything all about PhD in one single video. Getting a fellowship in PhD is not a big task the way you have assumed and gotten it in your head. Just follow the basic principles of applying for scholarships, finding out about scholarships. Google Kumar is there only to give you all the required information related to the subjects. If you have any doubts, leave it in the comments below. Till the next video, bye.